Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Taiko. I've been thinking a lot about grip these days. I find myself kind of off and on focusing on grip. And I remember around year 15 in San Jose Taiko that I went from having a pretty decent grip to having a really good grip, maybe the best grip for me. I was able to go from playing fast and loud and for a long period of time with just a few blisters on my fingers to being able to play faster, louder, longer with hardly any blisters. So I knew I was doing something right. But I'm not going to teach you my grip because my best grip may not be your best grip. Instead, I want to give you and the Taiko community the tools and the options and the awareness and the drills that will help you develop your best grip. Now, I've got a couple of videos that I'm going to release over the next few weeks that cover different aspects of grip. Today's video is more about awareness, telling you the different points, different things to look at, different things to be aware of, not so much about drilling, not so much about demoing. But all you need for today's video is a bocce, something to practice with. You don't even need something to hit. But if you have a bocce, you can follow along and figure out what I'm talking about and feel the differences and the points that I'm talking about as we go along. For today's video, I'm going to cover four aspects of grip. There's way more than four, but for this video, four will do. And the first one is probably the most important one, and that's tension at rest. For a taiko player, tension is our worst enemy. When it comes to grip, if I'm holding on too tight, I've stopped the rebound from happening, I'm stopping the whip and the wrist snap from really uh, finding its full potential. I'm going to get more tired when I play. Everything is just so much harder. So at rest is your kamaite or yoi, your ready but relaxed position. You don't have much tension here. You should have hardly anything, just enough that the bachi don't fall out of your fingers. For me, it's a combination of not falling out, but easily, just easily uh, slid out of my hand. This is as relaxed as I can be. Now when I start to play, I'm going to add tension in my grip because I don't want bocce flying out of my hand. But I'm always trying to get back to this relaxed feeling. So if you don't start with relaxation, if you start with tension, you can't get more relaxed than where you start. So if I'm playing, I can never ever get more relaxed than this starting position. And if it starts tense, you can never play relaxed. Next up, we have the fulcrum or pinch point. I don't know if that's a real term or not, I, I like it. Most taiko players will grip with the thumb, bachi, and either single or adjacent fingers. I mean, you could use non-adjacent fingers, but this is really weird. I mean, maybe I have blisters on the other two fingers, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, for this video, I'm gonna focus on three basic grips. Top or front grip, middle grip, bottom or back grip. Uh, I will use the turns interchangeably with the front and back ones just because I will. Um, and even though I might say front grip, it's not like the other fingers are just hanging out, not doing anything. Uh, the other fingers are usually used for insurance, a little bit of extra control, but the focus will be on two of those fingers, top, middle, or bottom. So let's start with the top grip. The top grip is the most common grip most taiko players will, will find themselves using. I mean, these two fingers are your stronger fingers for, for most of us, right? And it's going to be very natural just to wrap them around the bocce and have them do the most work. Nothing wrong with that. The, the control that you get and the amount of power you can get out of this grip is pretty good. Except because these fingers are the strongest two fingers, often a lot of people over squeeze. They're using that strength and it winds up killing their grip. Just like I talked about before about having too much tension. Uh, also, people that grip too hard with the top grip often get cramps. And when you're playing and you get cramps, you're kind of screwed. Most people can't stop, shake their hand out, and play again. The bottom grip, or back grip, is really interesting. Because when I grip with the top, from this point up is my striking, striking surface, if you will. This is what's whipping forward. When I switch to the back grip, now I have a good inch for me, or more, that's added to the surface. It's going to generate potentially more momentum, more snap, more force. And that's really, really cool. The second thing about the back grip, 
Since these fingers aren't as strong, you're less likely to overgrip and to cause a lot of tension. However, because you have the weaker two fingers and a lot more force, it's often really hard to sort of corral all of this energy into these fingers. And I've seen a lot of players who use a back grip where the recoil is different directions. It's kind of a sloppier strike. And it's hard to get a really good strike consistently with these two fingers at the helm. And then, middle grip. Middle grip is the best and worst of both worlds. It's not as strong as the front grip, it's stronger than the back grip. It doesn't allow for as much surface area as the back grip, but more than the front grip. And I actually tell most people to practice with the middle grip. Because it is in the middle, you learn the fundamentals without being biased towards one or the other, and then as you start to perfect your best grip, you can decide which works best for you. The next aspect of grip I want to talk about is contact or surface tension. The amount of surface contact you have with your bocce will determine how much or how little control you have over a strike. On one extreme, you have very little touching the bocce. You can generate a lot of power this way. If I whip my bocce down and strike, it's going to have a lot of power. It's also going to fly out of my hand because I don't have any control. The other extreme is a death grip. It will never ever leave my hand. But the problem is, it's also killing my strike. It's getting rid of the rebound, it's getting rid of the speed, it's getting rid of the, the ability to play for any length of time because I'm just tight, so tight. Ideally, you want to shoot for the middle. I'm not saying the middle is the best, but you want to be closer to here than you are on either extreme. There are two things I see a lot of taiko players do, especially beginning players, but not always beginning players. Number one is having the thumb on top. Now, this gives you more surface, uh, surface contact, which means you have more control, but it inhibits the recoil. You can only recoil back as far as your thumb can go. Another thing I see a lot of times is having the bachi resting in the webbing of your hand. So all the parts of your fingers and your thumb and even your hand can manipulate and modulate your bachi. You can make your bachi go down, you can make your bachi go up, you can rotate it around, but the webbing, the webbing, all the webbing can do is flex. That's it. That's all their webbing can do. It doesn't help. And in fact, it keeps your bachi from moving. Right? If I don't add any force, any, any weight, it's actually, I actually have to push and pull to make it move. And I can feel it rubbing and pulling against that skin. And I'll bet you there's not a taiko player out there that hasn't had a sweaty palm and a pair of bachi that have rubbed against that webbing to the point of pain. So why have it there? There's really no reason. It, sometimes it feels more secure, and yeah, you will have more control, but not the kind of control that actually helps. So if you can, keep it out. Roll it away from the webbing, outside of the cave, however you want to think about it, so that there's space in between. This will prevent blisters, calluses, pain and screaming, and it gives you more ability for the bachi to move. Just like moving your thumb out of the way, gives your bachi more room to move this way. The last aspect I'm going to talk about today is choke. I talked just a little bit about choke in a chocolate video, but the amount of bachi coming out the bottom of your hand in your grip is your choke. If you choke up, you gain control. If you choke down, you gain the ability for more whip, more momentum. It's not guaranteed, but it allows for this. However, we're talking within a very small window, like centimeters up or centimeters down. Once I go past these limits, whatever they may be for you, you start to really sacrifice something. If I go up too high, I'm getting a lot of control, but at the cost of a lot of speed and momentum and whip and the ability to do all the really cool things a good grip will give you. And I see this grip in a lot of taiko players because that control feels really good, but you wind up poking or punching at the drum versus being able to really let the bachi do the work. Now the other extreme is one of the few times that I actually don't think it's a bad idea because I do it. Um, so there's a bias there. The negative choke is something I rarely, rarely see. When I play with shimai bachi, 
I very often have a negative choke. My bachi is actually resting on the muscle of my hand. Now, what this means is I do have less control, but I'm so used to playing this way that I've developed a really good grip around that, and I'm able to play most everything I want. Again, with shime bachi, not my regular bachi. Now, if I need to play something very complicated or very fast, then I will shift to a regular position, but still I tend to have a very small chook. And that brings us to the end of my first video in a series on grip. Next week, I'm going to do a video on grip with drills, touching on a lot of the stuff I talked about, and maybe some stuff I didn't get to talk about. And if I've got way too many drills to fit in one video, I'll just keep making videos until I'm out of drills. So thank you for bearing with me on this monologue of ideas and concepts related to uh, grip. Uh, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I got to tell you, when I'm working on grip and trying to improve from best to even better, these are exactly the kind of concepts I return to time and time again. This is the foundation, this is the fundamental that lets you play all of the cool things, all the cool ways. So, if you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up. If you have comments, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, let me know why. If you have a negative choke, let me know in the comments. There's got to be other players besides me who do that. I swear I can't be the only one. And for every new subscriber I get between the launch of this video and next week's video, I will do an entire push-up. So we're looking at like two push-ups, right? I mean, the things I do for my fans is crazy. I know, right? So until next time, keep gripping, but not too hard, and be well.